What party was? <laughs> Shocking. I know. Shocking. Shocking. I, I, I like Thanksgiving meal. I know. <laughs> so. Do you put whipped cream on it? Just depends. Depends how much I eat. All right, D-Led. Jarvis is very anti-pumpkin powder. Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, what will be some of the keys to, you know, getting ready here for Jacksonville and, and uh, you know, getting the offense going? We're going to stay with the offensive team. Man. Sure. D-Led, that's like every week. Um, you got to prepare. We need, we need to have a good week of practice. Uh, we need to get back to playing smarter football, which we which I felt like we did for the most part through a six-game stretch. We went four and two. I thought we played pretty good. Like I said, we we, we did a little obstacle, but what we got to do? We got to get back to work. We got to play smarter. We got to execute better. We got to coach smarter. All of the above, but it's going to start today out of practice. That's the way we prepare. Um, as every day, every week, you got to have to deal with different issues, different schemes you're playing, different matchups. And that's life in the NFL. But we're excited to get back to work today. When the starter job, I just looked at game by game. Y'all were hot in their top of sure. the there for, for a second. Uh, you got to look at what was working there. Absolutely. Uh, to recapture that. Absolutely, d and, and there's some things that we got to do better. Uh, we understand that, you know, there's different challenges every week. Whether you certain matchups up front or maybe the cover schemes or the players you're playing. Uh, we certainly we need to get back to what I said. we got to get back to playing smarter, which we've had for a six-game stretch. That we need to get back to this week. And you know, we didn't we didn't do a good job on Monday uh, about asking about Matt Ryan's foot and Cordarrelle and any, any other injury updates for us. Like Jalen Hopkins, I guess. Would be a big uh, they'll be out there today. We'll evaluate them day to day, uh, but they'll, they'll be out there today. Michael. Yeah, I guess when you look at Matt Ryan, I mean, is there any real concern that he wouldn't be available on Sunday? I mean, again, the longer you're in this league, Michael, strange things happen. So. Uh, I don't feel pretty good about it, but as always, you got to have a consistency plan. Uh, so in case something happens to any of your players, but uh, I feel pretty good. If guys are practicing. Usually, it's a good sign. And as far as what, is there more that you can do to get Matt for Matt to get him more protection? Like There's a lot of things you can do. Um, like I said, we just from top bottom. Like I said, when we we played pretty smart, and we've executed well. It's looked pretty good. We haven't. It, it, it's looked like it has the last two weeks. But I'm confident we'll get back on track. And um, against a good opponent and, and a really important game for us Sunday. Do you, do you feel like you've found a defensive identity? Well, that's what you're building, you know, which is still, you know, it's still a work in progress, really in all three phases. Uh, you, we want to get to the point where, you know, we're the, we're the, the most physical, smartest team on the field. And, you know, at times we've shown flashes in certain situations and other times we haven't. And I think, uh, um, you know, we, we didn't. And that was what, you know, going back to Thursday was the most disappointing. You know, you're playing a really good team, a championship caliber uh, defense and a good, you know, team that's historically won a lot of games and you make those minor mistakes, you deserve to lose. And that, that's what's frustrating because we have done it at times. If we hadn't all year and you're saying the same song and dance and you're, you're selling hope and, and this and that, but we, we have done it. It's a grind in the NFL season. That's what I always said. You're, there's going to be little obstacles in the way. We got to work through them and I'm confident that we will. Using the word playing smarter, being smarter. Yes. Well, I'm assuming you're talking about like the self-inflicted wounds and sure. situational football. But what are you kind of meaning when you're talking about there, playing smarter? There's a lot of different examples. Getting your depth on the routes. It's, it's a game within the games that you don't realize. You know, if you get your depths, a lot of times you can save yourself from some of those short yardage situations and stay on track, right? And you, and you become more efficient. And it's a it's a minute detail, but it's but they all matter when you talk about timing and spacing and trust in the passing game, and that's a small example. Or understanding the call we need to make protection wise, getting on the same page and making it so you can have better protection, so you you you're gonna avoid some of the um, you don't give the defense advantage in certain situations. Those are all little details. That's why football's so fun. I mean, you you love that people love this game, and there's so many variables. It's it's so different than any other sport. Because those little details, the game is a game that you have no idea unless you're sitting in a meeting room. You don't know what's being asked. You got a general idea. Most people that played, you got a general idea. But so you're running a six-man protection. There's teams week to week. They tweak things. You may ask you something. If you don't execute it, it can look pretty bad. And uh, that's the fun part about football and really pro football. But those are the things that we can be smarter about. That's a great question, and, and that's the truth. And uh, 
yeah, you can't sit there and, and say you're going to be a physical team and you got a bunch of non-physical guys. I mean, I think for the most part, we got the right guys. Certainly, you need the right people. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, I didn't, I didn't go to med school, so I don't do heart transplants. But you try, to, you try to have that culture. You try to get the right people in there, and there's an identity in the way you want to play because year over year, especially at the end of the season, that's what can wear people down. But, uh, it, yeah, it definitely goes hand in hand. It definitely goes hand in hand. I always use the analogy, uh, if you want to be a high-volume three-point shooting team, don't go get guys like me to go shoot three-pointers. Same, same thought. That's a good question, Josh. How then do you develop it? So with the people. Well, it's a, it's a, you know you want to get the right people. You want to have the right culture, and you gotta you gotta hold everybody to to the same standard. Or if you want to use that word, which is a trendy word, but that is true. You can't start making exceptions. You start making exceptions, and you look the other way, then you're you're not being consistent, and then you're just being a hypocrite. Charles, because you always talk about you know week to week, obviously the season week to week, regardless of who you're playing. Correct. In the um, how do you convey that message to your team, kind of help them to understand that regardless of the record that Jaguars have, like yeah. this is the game that you got to be You would hope, uh, I think it's for all of us in life, um, it's about perspective. Uh, I think there's there's no I – mean, football is just kind of a microcosm of it, right? You, you win a game and, and you, you feel good, and, and if you believe the, the, the BS, what I like to call it, after you win a game, then shame on you. And if you believe the BS after you lose a game, Shame on you there too. So I think you, you you can. There's plenty of examples of history in a lot of different industries. Or you look at you know seasons in the past. You're not the first team to ever start 0 and 2. You're not the first team that started 4 and 6 and got to the and, and, and made a run and got to the playoffs. So there's historical precedent there too, and you got to keep things in perspective. So I think that's one thing, and and it's the hardest thing to do because what people what you normally want to do is you want to relax and be comfortable. And, and the NFL is a grind. And, and like you said, if you don't bring it, it doesn't matter what your record is going into a game. It's pro football. You can be uh, humbled in a heartbeat, and you can't ever lose sight of that. And we've got countless examples. You just look at this season for us. So and that's, that's a big part of it. But I think perspective is such a, such a big part of life, and especially in this game. Uh, yeah, I thought uh, Q, he, he ran hard. Uh, it, was, it was good to see. I thought he was talking about physical. I thought he ran physical. Um, you know, he's a guy that's, that's worked through it. It obviously hasn't been the uh, probably easiest season for him. You know, it's, not, it's, it's a hard job. We understand it's the NFL, but guys like him who go through the ups and downs and the journey of the roster, but I thought he's, he certainly earned the right for more carries, and we'll just have to see how the game plan goes and how this week goes. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that can break down on a play. Again, you don't, unless you're in the meeting rooms, you don't, you don't understand. Uh, you know, what you think you see is not necessarily what, what really happened. Um, you look at it, again, like the ones the other night. Um, you got to give, again, the defense has a say in it too, Avery. You can't forget that. Certainly, when it doesn't work, and that's the job you sign up for, okay, why didn't, why didn't it work? Was it a bad, was it a poor scheme? Was it a poor matchup? Did we execute? So when you get in there and, you, and you, you run a maybe you run a staple play and whatever happens happens and you don't execute something on the perimeter and then maybe that stops you or they throw a different look at you and somebody gets beat up front there's a lot of things to attribute to it and other times again when you've got really um, I always thought the outliers you know it doesn't matter what you call sometimes you just got a great player I, I you know and they're just gonna make a play so there's a lot of factors that go into it we certainly look at it. Um, you know, at times where you have a small lack of execution, there's a ripple effect to it. And, and that certainly the, um, that happened Thursday night. But uh, there's been times we've been okay. Other times we need to get a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark said signing him yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, well, what did I see from him in this time? You had to give him kind of a dusting, I guess. You're correct. And sometimes, and that's as simple as answer. You know, the, you know, Dustin. I thought, and he has. He's punting pretty well for us lately. But 
we're, we're, we're still living through a pandemic and I know, you know, there's things change daily. And so that's life and that's reality. And uh, so obviously Dustin goes on the, the COVID IR and you've got to find a, a punter. And so Thomas is a guy that, you know, we've liked, we, we, you, that's why you have a good pro scouting staff and, and everybody's on the same page and you bring them in here. So we brought Thomas in here and we brought uh, Don Maggio back in here and uh, we'll just see how the week goes. Well, somebody's got to punt. Hopefully we're not punting a lot, but somebody's got to punt. <laughs> It's pretty simple, man. Like, we try to get all of our players open. There's never a lack of intent. We like Kyle up all over the field. Like I said, I mean, they, you get in too many uh, obvious pass rush situations. Sometimes it's not necessarily the route. It takes all 11 in the passing game. You know, if you have a, a breakdown of protection or somebody wins, uh, you know, and the route doesn't have a chance to develop. Or if he doesn't run a good route. So uh, that's the thing, too. Again, you can, a still picture in this game doesn't tell you the whole thing that happened. Again, you don't know what we're asking to do. Guy could be short on a route, doesn't take the right release. Like I said, the defense has a say, too. Like all these guys, we work really hard every day to try to get them open. And, you know, it takes all 11. It's a coordinated effort from all of us, you know, players and coaches. And on the surface, when they see the end result, and he runs away from somebody the first play of the Dallas game, you know, it looks, looks pretty damn good. Uh, but there's several factors to it. He lines up all over the place. But as a team, d led I know the focus, I know the hype. He's a rookie, but as an offense, we, we got to play better. And, we, and that's, it's, that's everybody. So, um, I, you know, anything else you got to add to that? I mean, it's more of a. Yeah, the O-line, um, I'm just trying to make sure because, you know, you said it's hard to change the midseason. You said the, the schematic tweaks. Is that how much Mike Brown is going to help you with the line? They just got to play better. We'll see you Sunday. No, I think it's Monday. Yeah. There's no update. We'll give you, as soon as we get an update, we'll give you an update. There's no update. Yeah. Um, as far as what your receivers are able to do, uh, create separation, they're running their routes, are you generally, how do you kind of assess? Are you doing plays or are you wanting to see? It's kind of the story of our season. At times it's looked pretty good. At other times it needs to be better. And it's just what it is. And that's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, on third down, more times than not, you're going to have to beat man coverage in this league. And that's usually a pretty good indicator. And you're, you're seeing one, some one-on-ones. You see it more on third down in, in certain situations. And, the, you know, you can do different things. And we, we certainly motion a lot. You, you play out of bunches and stacks. Um, but when you're playing a really good defense and you're going one-on-one, -on -one, you're going you're gonna to learn a lot about your player. It doesn't mean that that's the way it's going to be because it didn't look good Thursday night. It doesn't mean that we can't go in there and, and play and, 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 and improve and, and obviously, obviously execute better on Sunday. But that's a challenge week to week. And the other hard challenge is the focus for 17 games to bring it week after week, day after day. Michael, this is your first time really going through it. What's your philosophy kind of last third of the season of managing players, managing practices? Because different coaches yeah. are different. No, it's a good question. It just depends on your team, where you're at. You know, we're year one. Um, other than a few guys, we're a pretty young football team. So I think that's, that's, there's a constant evolution. We look at it every day. We track guys, uh, workloads. Uh, a lot of thought goes into it. Obviously, you you know everybody's dealing with injuries, so you got to be smart. So you know you may want to practice most of your team, but this guy maybe need to be limited, you know, just to get him you know managed. Maybe as a veteran, and that you know try to be progressive there. If you've got an older team, like I said, my my first year in the league with Joe Gibbs, we had a very veteran team, and he took a different approach. But we we had a veteran, really veteran team. Right now, we got a young team, and so I think every coach that's the fun part. You got to make the best decision, but that's a constant evaluation and. Uh, but I know this with most of our guys, we need to practice Dustin, right now. Dustin, from the, do you go into a season saying, like, I know you're big on team success. Do you, yeah. Do you go into the season saying, okay, if there are X, then I'm going to do that? Like, do you plan all that out before the season, or is it? Yeah, you plan ahead, but there, there's certain things that happen. I mean, like, you may have injuries there, and you need to get more work on a guy that, that's a veteran to say, hey, maybe on you know, November on a Wednesday. We, we can help him rest. I know that's a that's a popular word in, in sports. You know, you talk about load management or whatever the, the term you want to use, but, you know, resting and, and managing your players and knowing that they're all different. It's not one size fits all. But overall, you know, we're year one. We got a young team. We need to we need to play a lot better, We got, and it starts with practice. But if you get to a certain point in your program, and again, you, you know, you got 31 other flavors, um, 
and that's the fun part. And you want to make sure it's what's best for your team, where the health of your team's at, where you're at in the season, what you need to accomplish. Do you have a favorite Thanksgiving memory? Anybody back corner? Not really. I mean, you know. <laughs> that, that ain't your holiday? No, I like it. I, I just, I might, you know, it's like I said, I think like most of the league, whether you, you structure practice, I know the teams that play, it's right your first year not covering a Thanksgiving game. Yeah, it's been a while. So, uh, no, I love Thanksgiving. You know, I you know, wish I could see my whole family, but I got a job to do, and, and it's certainly the players and coaches, everybody will take time to hopefully eat with who they want to eat with tomorrow, you know, after we put work in in the morning. Um, I, I don't have a favorite Thanksgiving memory. Yeah, but, you know, maybe Christmas, maybe, but uh, not Thanksgiving. Yeah, what was like today, like, you know, football game when you were like 10 or something? No. Yeah, practice. Well, who's going to practice? Uh, do you know how many um, contact practices you have left? You know, Coach Taylor was saying he had to let use eleven. We got three left the rest of the way. Who's that? Uh, Zach Taylor. He's on. Oh, you know, well, good for Zach. Taylor, yeah. So um, yeah, that's pretty standard. Uh, you got about three left, or are you even saving them? Or? <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. You know, <laughs> but we're well aware of the rules. We're well aware of how many we got left. Yes, correct. No. You just answered your own question. <laughs> Like, what do you need me for? What do you need me for? You just answered your own question. No, you know, no, I, I, I can't be like Chuck Nolan. We can't go full full goal line on 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 Friday. So. <laughs> but you want to save a couple of those cases you want to. Sure. Yeah. Everybody's playing by the same rules. Right. And uh, so where are you at on the uh, Thanksgiving and the mac and cheese debate? You trying to insinuate something here? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's something wrong with you if you don't like mac and cheese. Okay. <laughs> I mean, let's take a, a, a poll in here. Like, who doesn't like mac and cheese? Can, can we take a poll? Like, who doesn't like mac and cheese? Okay, let's just take it. It's one of those things. There's, there's very few things that, that, uh, that everybody can agree on these days. Uh, but I, w- I would think. I mean, there's probably somebody that's offended by it right now. But <laughs> let's put it this deal. I think 90% of people probably like mac and cheese. If they don't, if they don't, they're lying. That's good. Now we've got peace. Coach, I want to ask you a few questions. Um, in your days as a player, was there like a tough matchup that you had to kind of you know, figure out, like what, from a technique standpoint, like how you were going to go up against that or attack that guy? And do you use that now to kind of like, as a coach, and kind of like regurgitate it? But you just try to understand everybody's got different, every issues, every player is a little bit different. You know, what is, what's their skill set? What are their strengths? What their matchup is? What they're going against? Um, yeah, it all, all taken account. It's not one size fits all. Anthony, um, when you look at the tape, what do you see from Trevor Lawrence and some things that um, he does well, um, even though he's just a rookie and stuff? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got a live arm. I mean, he's a talented player, and I, I'm willing to bet he's going to figure it out. Uh, he's played well. You know, he's like I said, he's a rookie, but he's a very talented player. I can see why he was the first overall pick. Uh, you know, he can hurt you with his feet when he gets going. He's a great athlete. He's got a live arm. Um, my, I, I have a Thanksgiving question too. Um, do you prefer a turkey for Thanksgiving? I know it's popular, but some people will say no turkey. That's the yeah, I'm, I'll eat turkey. There's not a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. As you can tell right here, there's not a lot of things I don't. <laughs> ask, so. so. Any more, any more food questions? <laughs> oh. All right. Hope you guys have a good.